It's actually pretty awesome seeing this kind of performance. 4K ultra settings out of a handheld. Now given we are connected to an eGPU, but I'm glad they added Thunderbolt 4 here. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking another look at the GPD Win 4, but in this one we're going to be testing an external GPU. Now I've been having a blast with this handheld the way it sits, but GPD did add USB 4 up top, and it's actually using 40 gigabit protocol, so connecting an external GPU is actually pretty easy. And of course, first and foremost, this is a handheld gaming machine. I completely understand that, but we do have the option to add an external GPU. That way, when you get back to the house, you can actually just set this up on the desk, plug in an external GPU and up that GPU performance by quite a bit. Now, if you're not familiar with the GPD Win 4, I have created a couple videos. We did some Windows testing. That's what it comes with right out of the box. And we also installed SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. If you're interested in checking those videos out, I'll leave some links in the description. But adding an eGPU to this is actually quite simple. Now, there's several ways to go about it. But I'd say the easiest way is just to pick up an eGPU dock. Now, uh, what I've got here is an older Sonnet dock. Unfortunately, it doesn't offer any kind of PD charging. Actually, it does 10 watts, but that's really not enough to keep the battery topped off. And I definitely need to upgrade soon. This thing has been through the ringer. I've modified it so we could fit a three slot GPU and I've added a bigger power supply. And in this video, we're actually going to be testing out an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. This is a Galax version with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now you might have noticed I have a little stand here and this was actually originally designed for the GPD Win 3 and I've modified it a little bit to make the Win 4 fit but keep in mind GPD is offering a new stand that'll kind of slide right down in here and it'll work with the GPD Win 4. But this is actually great if you've already got one because on the rear here we've got PD power in, HDMI, three USB ports, and Ethernet. And with this, I can actually charge the unit up because my eGPU dock doesn't offer PD power out. A lot of the newer ones do like 65 watts, which is plenty for the GPD Win 4. This one just doesn't do it. All right, so here we are. I've got the GPD Win 4 in the dock. And by the way, I do have power plugged into the dock because this is an older Sonnet eGPU dock and it really doesn't put out a lot of wattage, I think around 10 watts. But the newer ones will charge the unit and you can also use the external graphics card at the same time. This one's just old and I think I need to upgrade soon. But if I give it a little bit of time, because this is actually the first time I'm plugging in the RTX 3080, fans will start spinning up. Uh, Windows will automatically download an older NVIDIA driver, which uh, we definitely want to update. And the way this is set up is we've got the external monitor connected to the RTX 3080. We want everything running out of there. Now it is possible to use this external GPU on the built-in screen, but performance is gonna be cut in half and we're already gonna be limited here because we're using this over a Thunderbolt 4 connection. Plus these Thunderbolt 3 cables are only a little over a foot long. So, uh, you know, sitting at the desk with this plugged in, I mean, you could do it, but we're gonna be using this external monitor and I wanna jump right into some gaming because I was really impressed by what this thing can do. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything situated and install my new Nvidia drivers. All right, so before we jump into gaming, I wanted to give you a quick look here. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U, eight cores, 16 threads. We can still access the Radeon 680M iGPU, but instead of using that, we're gonna be using the RTX 3080 Ti. 12 gigs of VRAM, and this wasn't without issue. Now I'm working with early drivers on the Win 4 right now, and I'm not sure if this could be attributed to that or, you know, maybe even my eGPU dock or the cable. But with this card, I actually had to go into Afterburner and limit the power to 80% because I was running into stuttering at 100%. But dropping it down to 80 seems to kind of smooth everything out. And uh, by the way, I've actually got the TDP on the 6800U at 35 watts right now. In handheld mode, you really don't want to run this at 35 watts. But since we've got power here, I don't have to worry about battery life. But the fan in the Win 4 does spin up a lot more than if we were running at 15 or even 28 watts. But it keeps it cool enough. We don't hit thermal throttle at 35 watts. All right, so first up, we've got Doom Eternal 4K Ultra Settings. And like I mentioned, you know, since we're connected over a Thunderbolt connection here, we aren't getting the full potential of this RTX 3080. But either way you look at it, it really did up the performance. Now, if this card was plugged into a real PCIe X16 slot and a gaming PC, we could go up to Ultra Nightmare 4K, no problem. But given that we're running over Thunderbolt on a mobile chip, this isn't bad at all. 
Next on the list, we've got God of War. So we're at 1440p ultra settings with no DLSS. And with these newer AAA games, this is kind of where Thunderbolt starts showing the performance loss. Now with this game here on the RTX 3080 at 4K, we could get a little over what we're doing right now. But since we're limited by that bandwidth, 1440p Ultra is really going to be the sweet spot here. And of course, we could go ahead and lock this down at 60 and have a great time with it. And another thing you got to remember is I've set the power on the RTX 3080 to only 80% because at 100, I was getting a lot of stuttering with basically everything that I tested. And I think it comes down to either my eGPU dock or the cables that I'm using. I've got three Thunderbolt 3 cables and was actually doing the same thing with each of them, so I went ahead and ordered some Thunderbolt 4 cables. Hopefully that will fix the issue. If not, I will have to invest in a new dock. But as you can see here, The Witcher 3 runs phenomenally. 1440p, ultra, looking great. I mean, we're getting around 120 FPS out of this one. And of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077. 1440p, high settings, and this one still gave me some issues, even though I've got that power limited. We still get some dips down into the upper 60s, and you know, I thought we'd get a nice steady frame rate out of this, but I am seeing some anomalies here when this is connected over USB 4. I mean, it's kind of all over the place. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 4K Ultra settings, and I'll tell you that the 6800U in the Wind 4 actually handles this really well at 1080p medium settings. We can do over 60 just on the built-in iGPU, but we can definitely up that resolution and the frame rate with an external GPU. Here's Elden Ring, ultra settings, 1440p, and you will see some screen tearing here. I actually didn't notice it while I was filming, but when I went back, I did notice it in the footage. It's my fault, I forgot to turn VSync on, and my monitor's actually set at 144 hertz right now. It's usually set up for a variable refresh rate, but it wasn't with this one. It actually performs really well, but I did get a few dips down to around 57 FPS, and I'm just going to chalk it up to the connection we're using here. So everything we've seen so far actually performs really well, but there are a few games that just don't like eGPUs no matter what way you go about it. And these new Spider-Man games, be it Spider-Man Remastered or Miles Morales, just don't like external GPUs. I've tested this on a bunch of different systems, and I've never been able to get a steady frame rate out of it. We're at 1440p, very high settings, and even if I go down to 720p, very low settings, we're going to get the same frame rate we have right now. It's just something about the way the game's set up. I just haven't really had good luck with external GPUs in this one. Overall, when it comes to eGPU performance, it's not looking bad. And keep in mind, it's still really early for the drivers on the Win 4 here. This is kind of a prototype unit. It's still up on Indiegogo as making this video. And I know not a lot of people are going to be pairing up a 3080 Ti with this, but I do have more GPUs. I'm just kind of waiting on those new cables to come in just to see if we could alleviate any of those stutters I was getting with those higher power limits on that card. Now, I've done a lot of testing on the channel with uh, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, and USB 4, be it on uh, Intel or even Ryzen. And one of my favorite cards is actually the RTX 3060. It's a non-TI variant. I think it pairs up really well with USB 4 and these Ryzen chips. So as soon as I get those USB 4 cables in, we will be doing some testing with the 3060. And I also want to throw in an AMD card. I've got the RX 6500, 6600, we can do a 6750 or a 6900 XT. Just let me know what you want to see running on this in the comments below. Even lower end cards would probably be pretty awesome on this. One that I've actually been wanting to test is the 1660. No, it's not a top of the line card, but with a smaller eGPU enclosure, less power, you could definitely get some really great 1080p performance out of it. But when it comes down to it, I've been having a lot of fun with the GPD Win 4. If you're interested in checking SteamOS, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, running on this unit, link for that video is in the description, along with a Windows testing video, just strictly on the iGPU here. And it does a great job, even just at 15 to 28 watts. And 28 watts is kind of gaming mode here for a lot of these manufacturers with these 6800U handhelds. And if you're interested in learning more about the Win 4, maybe even backing the Indiegogo, I'll leave a link for that down below. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.